Oh, thank you all for coming, and it's a privilege to be here. And thanks, Jayanth, for inviting me <laughs> or accepting my invitation. <laughs> um, so today, let's uh, do some semantic parsing with and without question answer pairs. Uh, so this is a joint work uh, with my supervisors from uh, University of Edinburgh, um, and also like joint work with other people from University of Illinois, Google, and Peking University. There are too many people, so I'm, I'm saving myself some time. Uh, OK, so what is semantic parsing? So semantic parsing is converting natural language to a machine executable language, right? And in this talk, we are particularly talking about freebase semantic parsing. So by this, I mean you have freebase, which has entities uh, and uh, relations between these entities. So here you have Titanic, uh, and Titanic's uh, director is James Cameron, and and the cast here is DiCaprio, Kate Winslet. So now, given a natural language sentence like Leonardo DiCaprio starred, starred as Jack in Titanic, which was directed by James Cameron, this is a pretty complex sentence, uh, and the goal is to convert such sentence into a grounded representation. So here, uh, that grounded representation is a freebase language, which has different predicates than natural language. Uh, so you're saying cast of Titanic is DiCaprio and he acted as Jack. So you have uh, a predicate which takes three arguments and the other predicate which takes two arguments. And when you execute this particular statement on freebase, you end up with a truth value because this statement is true. But if you give something that's false uh, and you build this uh, logical form and then execute it on freebase, you get false. Okay. Uh, and there are many applications for, uh, for this task. One application is question answering. So given a question, trying to answer it on freebase. So who is the director of Titanic? And you have freebase, and now you can answer it as James Cameron. The other applications could be also like knowledge-based population, where you take whole web corpus and uh, build, build logical forms for the web corpus and then try to populate knowledge base using uh, the, the semantic parsers you get in the end. But I'm particularly interested uh, on this task, question answering <coughs> or freebase. Okay, and if, if you see the existing methods, you could uh, broadly classify them into two dimensions. So one is to, uh, based on the type of supervision, and the other is the kind of modeling you do. By this, I mean, let's focus first on the type of supervision. So in the type of supervision, you have direct supervision, where you are given a question, like, who is the director of Titanic? And uh, you're also given a logical form, like here, which says, uh, there, is some, there is somebody called X, and X is a director. And X, uh, there is an event called a directed by event, and one of the participants is uh, that uh, X, and the other participant is Titanic. Throughout the talk, uh, uh, you don't have to really understand these logical forms to uh, to comprehend the talk. So, please, uh, if you couldn't uh, have time to read the logical form, please don't read it. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Given these two logical forms, you uh, try to learn a semantic, uh, semantic parser. But there is also other kind of supervision, which is very, very popular these days, is uh, indirect supervision, where you have a question, and you do not have a logical form. You just have an answer. So here, in this case, uh, you just have the answer as James Cameron. Uh, but uh, like this is uh, also popularized uh, by Orion and uh, Krishnamurti. So here, where you do not do not have any questions and answers, what you have is just a web corpus and a, a free base, and then try to build a semantic parser using sentences. OK, so this talk is about uh, like type of supervision, where we do we uh, have a scenario where we do not use question answer pairs, and the other scenario where we use question answer pairs, and when we have both question answer pairs and uh, text. And coming to the modeling part, so people also like 
treated semantic parsing and as an end-to-end -end task where you are given a question and a logical form and now you try to learn a grammar that converts the question to the logical form. So in this case, here you say the director in natural language corresponds to the predicate film.director in, in Freebase. And you have some syntactic category saying director is of type noun. So this is uh, modeling using CCG, but you could use any of your favorite formalisms. Uh, and similarly, you have this of natural language uh, word, which has pretty complex semantics in this case. Okay, so this is like end-to-end -end semantic parsing, but there is also other popular uh, approach, which is uh, intermediate semantic parsing. So where you have question and you parse a question into your favorite formalism, uh, and the predicates are are not grounded yet. So in this case, so I call them ungrounded logical forms where you have the predicates that come from natural language. So you, in the question, you have director. And in the logical form, you have director as well. And then you take this ungrounded logical form and then convert that logical form to a grounded logical form. So this is uh, like you have an intermediate representation before going to the final representation. Okay, so. Uh, I take intermediate representation here. So in the modeling case scenario, we would see like I would treat semantic parsing as graph matching, semantic parsing as graph transaction, and also semantic parsing using relation extraction. So like the talk, the talk is outlined as follows. When we do not have question answer pairs, I use uh, semantic parsing as graph matching. When I have question answer pairs, I use semantic parsing as graph transaction. When I have question answer pairs and text, I frame it as semantic parsing with relation extraction. So I'll delve into more details. So you could ask me questions whenever you feel like. OK, so in this scenario, we do not have any question answer pairs. And I'm modeling semantic parsing as a graph matching problem. I will take more details. So the scenario is you have your training data which is just web corpus, and your evaluation task is question answering on Freebase. Okay? And the goal is to build a semantic parser that can answer questions. So the, before I do that, let's see what Freebase is. So Freebase is a big knowledge graph, as you all know. And it has entities. Here I represented them as rectangles. And it has events which, uh, which are like saying the relations between the entities. So here I'm saying the edge uh, Q represents that uh, oh, the, that Barack Obama is, the, uh, is a US citizen. And Freebase also has complex facts. So here there is a fact called M, which has three entities in it. Uh, so here it, this fact is saying Barack Obama did his ba bachelor's in Columbia University. So now that you know that Freebase is a graph, uh, you have web sentences. So some sentences like camera director, Titanic, 97, so all the web sentences. And <coughs> using CCG, I parse these sentences into an ungrounded logical form. So, And once I get that ungrounded logical form, I create a graph-like structure using that ungrounded logical form. And you know that Freebase is a graph. So I treat semantic parsing as a graph matching problem, where you have ungrounded natural language graph on one side, and you're trying to convert this natural language graph to Freebase graph. And using these pairs, I learn a model which can answer a question, a given new question. So let's look into more details like into each of these modules. So how do we convert natural language sentences to some logical representations? So the popular framework is uh, CCG, which is combinatory categorical grammar. So in CCG, you have so, uh, syntactic categories and semantic categories. So let's take the sentence, Cameron directed Titanic in 1987. So if you take the word directed, 
So the syntactic category is S back NP, PP, uh, forward NP. So which says that I need an NP on my right hand side, I need a proportional attachment on my right hand side, and an NP on my left hand side. So it has this pretty complex category. And using that category, you can articulate the predicate argument structure uh, using lambda calculus here. So I'm saying that there is some Z, in this case, Titanic, uh, and there is Y, which is uh, uh, 1997 here, and there is Cameron, and there is Cameron, which is X, and, and the predicate argument structure is there is an event E, and all of these entities are participants in this event, and the predicates are present. So the good thing about CCG is that you can derive logical forms compositionally, so here by this I mean here from directed and from titanic you can compute the semantics of directed titanic and uh, from in and 1997 you can compute the semantics of in 1997 and you can compute directed titanic in 1997 and in the end you would end up with the logical form for the whole sentence. Okay. So now we have ungrounded logical forms. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. So it's heavily le lexicalized. CCG formalism is heavily lexicalized. So directed would have uh, other things like on every possibility. Like uh, so, it, since it's a lexicalized formalism, you could also have uh, a category without in, but that would uh, make your semantics harder. So where do the lexical entries come from? Uh, so the lexical entries are given by a, by a CCG parser. So in this case, I use uh, like a CNC parser or easy CCG parser standard parsers which are trained on CCG bank, three bank. Okay, so, so the lexicon is at the end is derived from this uh, label in CCG parser. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole is just like lexical entries and R1 yeah. is like literally dependency values. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have the sentence, you have the logical <coughs> form now, so this is still ungrounded, and I'm converting this uh, logical form to a graph because Freebase is a graph. <coughs> so I take all the entities and treat them as nodes in, the, in, my, in my ungrounded graph, and take the event, and then treat event as the one that forms the edges between these entities, uh, and the predicates as edge labels. Right. So here we ended up with a uh, ungrounded graph in the end. Uh, similarly, if you have oh sorry, you just yeah. create a complete graph. Oh yes, yeah. I do like like clicks. So in this case, I create clicks because uh, uh, there are three events uh, participating in one single. So there are three entities participating in single event. But if there are two different events, it may not be complete. Yeah. It looks like another way you might do this is say to have a node for E in the middle and then links going out. Yeah. Uh, How that's do you choose like between those possibilities? Um, so I I chose this because uh, uh, later on it becomes very easy to map it to Freebase when I have everything treated as binary predicates rather than so here every edge has two entities, that's all. Whereas in the other representation, that's arbitrary. Like you might have two, you have, might have multiple. So it becomes hypergraph, and it, so the modeling is more complicated. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Uh, and given questions, like even questions, I parse them using uh, CCG and then get the logical forms. The only difference is in questions, you would have variables. So here, who directed Titanic? One of the entities is X, and that is the entity you are interested in. So that's why I rep represent that as target. So this is what you are interested in. Uh, and you could also do like uh, model quantifiers. Uh, 
So in this case, I'm, uh, so Cameron is the director of Titanic. So there is a predicate called unique attached to Cameron here, and which says that Cameron is the only entity that satisfies this graph. So you cannot, if you remove Cameron there, you cannot replace that node with anything else except Cameron. Mm -hmm. has, a, has a defined scope, like how do you deal with that? So, um, so in, in the logical form, you would know whether it, it attaches to the whole event or whether it attaches to one particular thing here. Uh, so here, here it attached to Cameron, like that's given by my logical form. So, so is CCG really in code now? Yeah, so CCG can handle quantifiers. But uh, for this task, I, I do not handle like all qu kinds of quantifiers. <laughs> but that's a good question. Yeah. 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 Could you also add a second fact that Cameron is a director in addition to this? Yeah. Because if, if we did it, if we were to perform this algorithm now, it sounds like we need to attach to that this sentence, but not to the Cameron is a director or member of a director. OK. Uh, Yeah, because, because of because the is director. Because well, and Cameron is a director, but not the like unique CCG is not as predictive as unique. Unique. Yeah, not the um, I guess in the uh, I'm, what I'm wondering is if you have two both of them in the same, um, if we ever pass both of those sentences in the same session, or is it just making one graph where you can attach many times there will be a separate graph for the other sentence. Yeah, so I'll have two different graphs in that case. So, yeah. Okay, so now we know how to convert natu natural language sentences to some kinds of graphs. Uh, okay, and let's see how this graph looks in Freebase. So here, this is our ungrounded graph on the left hand side, and the Freebase graph on the right hand side. So the similarities are the entity nodes here, like Cameron became capital Cameron in Freebase. But it, that could be like, it could become some entity. I just say that uh, to, uh, to indicate that these two are two different nodes, I kept them in capitalized. Um, and the other thing is the edge predicates. So here in natural language, we have directed.org2, directed.in, and then that became um, Freebase predicates. So, which says Titanic is released in 1997, whereas in natural language we are saying Titanic is directed in 1997. Uh, and one interesting thing is, so in the sentence, all the entities were participating in single event, which is E, whereas in Freebase, Cameron, Titanic, and 97 are participating in two different events, which is Cameron directed Titanic and Titanic is released in 1997. And it, uh, Freebase also says that the edge between Cameron and 1997 is not interesting. So it doesn't uh, encode that fact at all. Okay. Uh, um, so you take ungrounded graph and then create all possible Freebase graphs, but you do not know which of these graphs is correct. So for each graph, you might end up with multiple Freebase graphs. Right? But you need to know a way like which of these is actually the correct one. So for this, we learn using denotations. So let's take this example, like Cameron is the director of Titanic. Okay, And then what I'm doing here is I'm selecting one of the entity nodes in the graph and then removing it and replacing it with a variable. So I took Cameron in the previous graph and removed it and replaced it with X and made it a target node. As soon as I did that, this graph looks exactly similar to the question, who is the director of Titanic? So the good thing about CCG is CCG parses declarative sentences and questions into the same graphical representation. So if I can create some 
uh, question like graphs directly from declarative sentences. I could use denotation of the declarative sentence. So by this I mean, so you know that the one I removed is Cameron and uh, in, the, in the original graph it says that Cameron is the only entity that could satisfy this graph. So now we know that X could be filled only by Cameron here. So the denotation of X in natural language is Cameron. Okay. So I take this graph now and then convert it to free base graph. So one of the free base graphs is X produced Titanic. And if you take the denotation of X in free base, it says it's Cameron and John Landau. And we know that this is not the same as uh, the denotation which we require. So we can ignore this graph. Uh, but for the other graph, we could see that it's Cameron. Uh, so here, x directed Titanic, and this is the graph which we need. So I use this graph as a surrogate goal graph. It's not perfect, but it could be the answer. Okay. So I take this as my graph pairing, and then so if you see, what I did is learning proceeds by creating question-like graphs from declarative sentences. And then I'm trying to find the best free base graph that has the most similar denotation to my question graph. Okay. Uh, so now, for the model, we use structured perceptron. What it does is it takes two graphs. One is ungrounded graph, and the other is grounded graph. So I have a feature function which extracts features from the grounded graph, ungrounded graph, and here I, I call it question, but it's like sentence. Um, uh, and a weight vector which says how important is each feature. And for, for my training, I use a perceptron update which takes a surrogate goal graph and my predicted graph, and if they are not the same, I update my feature vector. In your example, mm -hmm. what was the learning? Like, didn't you already know in, in, in the novel days that Cameron was a graph? Oh, right. So this is very weak supervision. Like, uh, sometimes I, even with this kind of supervision, I end up with multiple graphs. So I have a question, uh, I have a declarative sentence, and I ended up with multiple graphs. And I pruned out some of the graphs based on my denotation, but still there are a few more graphs. Uh, but I want to have a model which can actually say this might be more probable than the other one. So you're learning the kind of probability. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, says like this graph is uh, scored higher than the other one. So this could be the right one. Because we do not have strong supervision here. Uh, so for for features we did that like so these features contains uh, like uh, graph connectivity features graph similarity features actually I didn't have that slide but so these features actually capture all those things because these two graphs look very similar you could do uh, extract pairs of features from ungrounded and grounded graph what's the about the graph? oh they're pretty small like four to five entities. There's like four to five entities is a lot already. Mm. So how do you, I'm assuming the process is that you find the entity, you find named mentions mm -hmm. in the sentence. You yeah. understand that you mentioned like using the alias yeah. that results in free base for some entity. Yeah. And then you um, find all paths that go from, that connect all of the entities, like you form a complete graph in free base just having those entities. Yes, uh, yes. So because like graph isomorphism is a big problem, I need to prune out my search space. So for that, I take some entity linker and try to find the graphs I am interested in without having to search the whole free base. And so on this, the surrogate goal graph is a, is a graph whose denotation matches the natural language. Exactly, 
Exactly. And you said you could have several of them. So what if you pick one in that set? Would you still be a favorite? Yeah, that's a good question. So what we do is we also rank the surrogate gold graphs using our current model. You could and then pick the best one there. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Um, so when I started my PhD, I wanted to do this for the whole freebase, but then I uh, on on my lab systems and other things, I couldn't scale it at all. Like I was wasting all my time, with all, almost like six months trying to scale it up for whole freebase. But then I gave up, and then s just focused on three big domains of Freebase. Because this is like I'm working with web corpus sentences, and Freebase is so big. Like, it's too hard. Like, uh, But even with three domains, it's it's quite big. So here I have 120 million triples, four level relations, and 210 types. And my training data is ClueWeb09. And I did a lot of filtering just trying to pick up good sentences I can learn from. And in the end, uh, I got like 99K very good sentences. So you could actually see them, and uh, these are quite useful, <coughs> really. And for test data, so here I have 124 queries from Free 917. So these are uh, curated by humans, seeing Freebase pages and other things. Uh, and, for, and I do not have any training data, like manual question answer page, all I have is clue web. Okay, so let's see how how this method did compared to others. So here I have one baseline which is greedy maximum weighted graph. So what I do is take an ungrounded graph and re replace each edge with the most probable free base edge. So the most frequent one or something. And the other one is uh, from Tom Kivotsky, which is a supervised system, which uses 612 question answer pairs for training. So these are manually curated question answer pairs. And it also uses uh, Wiktionary. So if you see the results, like we are doing better than the maximum weighted graph. So out of 100 questions, if you see the F1 scores, we were able to answer on this data set like 80 questions just using this unsupervised technique. Uh, whereas the supervised method by Tom Kiewoski, so they're still behind us, uh, which says that even though they used manual supervision, that's not enough for Freebase in this case. Um, and that time, web questions is raised, and people, the reviewers complained that I did not evaluate it on web questions, so I, I also evaluated it on web questions. And there were 570 queries for our target domains. So if I see compared with the maximum weighty, weighted graph, we still do better, like six points. So the learning is actually learning something. Okay. Then if you look into the kinds of errors we were doing, the majority of errors were coming from the syntactic parser. So 25% of the errors. Uh, so CCG like couldn't parse for some reason. Like when Gatroad was first developed, it finds it too hard because, because the word order changed a bit. When was Gatroad first developed? That's the more grammatical question. And there are also many the data set itself, like web questions, is bad, noisy, so we couldn't completely answer uh, questions like how many stores are in Nittany Mall. And very interesting category is uh, the graph mismatches. So what we are ha doing is we have an ungrounded graph, and then we are trying to find a s isomorphic graph in Freebase, right? But sometimes uh, it uh, you cannot have the same structure for your natural language graph and free base graph. So here, who is the grandmother of Prince William? If you take the natural language graph, you would have an edge between Prince William and Queen uh, Elizabeth. You will have a direct edge, whereas in free base, you would have two hops. So we couldn't do exact graph isomorphism here. Okay. So in summary, what I presented here is uh, a method 
for semantic parsing without using any question answer pairs. And also, one thing that's very different from existing work is that we could parse both questions and also declare it to sentences. It's not just uh, questions. Uh, all the semantic li parsing literature just focuses on questions. Uh, but there was one major limitation which we wanted to address was CCG parsers were available only for uh, English and not for many languages as well. Why would I want to use a single English question as a pair if it makes me an question as a pair? Because like CCG, the application for CCG is so wide that uh, people create three banks, right? So that's, that's not focused on question answering at all, like CCG part. Uh, so it's very general. CCG has been used for question answering, semantic parsing, and sentence similarities, and other things. So as such for s syntactic parsing. <laughs> that's right. Uh, end to end, that's the answer for everything. Uh, yeah, you're you're right. Like one of the major limitations is CCG is too hard to annotate. For English, we made it, but for other languages, uh, people are still working on it. And the other thing was uh, graph mismatch. Our predicted graphs were not similar to uh, free base graphs. So the, in the next part. Uh, uh, I address both of them. So having it for multiple languages and also uh, addressing the gra graph mismatch problem. And the other thing is uh, I couldn't compare, using that approach, I couldn't compare with the existing literature on the question. So here I compare with every possible uh, method that's there. And here I'm using the same kind of supervision which everybody uses, which is question answer pairs. So the scenario is you have question answer pairs as training data. So here I'm having multilingual question answer pairs, not just. Uh, and the evaluation is multilingual question answering on free pairs. So the multilingual part is not published yet. So this is uh, kind of new. Uh, so you have free base and a question and, a, and an answer as a uh, input, and uh, we assume that there is some latent logical form that can produce this answer, and the goal is to learn that lat latent logical form. Yeah. So this is exactly like previous approach, but there are a few things that are different. So what we did is, in the previous time, we took sentences, web corpus sentences, and then parsed it using CCG, whereas here what we are taking is questions that are given as input during training and parse them using dependency parser instead of CCG. And then there is a way to convert dependency trees to logical forms. So that is dep lambda, uh, we'll talk about it. And the other one is graph mismatch problem, where earlier we treated it as a graph matching problem, whereas here we are treating it as a graph transduction problem. So let, let me quickly explain like how to extract logical forms from dependencies. So this is, uh, this has not been done earlier, but we did this very recently and it's published. So here, you, if you take this sentence, Disney acquired Pixar. So Disney is the subject and acquired is the object. Uh, and to get logical forms, we have lambda calculus formulae for the dependency label, which is nsubj. And so here I in, have this short hand form, the semantics for acquired Pixar. I actually already computed it, so I kept it there. And also the semantics for Disney. So you, you take a dependency tree. You, in the dependency tree, you have words. You also have dependency labels. All you have to do is 
uh, write the logical forms for differentiable labels, write the logical forms for words, and then you can do the composition over the differentiate tree. So I'm not going to more details, but I'll be talking about this work in University of Washington on, on Friday. Okay, so there is a way to convert differentiate trees to logical forms, that's granted. And once we have logical forms, we can convert it to ungrounded graphs, and now we can do graph matching. But the problem is, if you take the sentence like, what is the name of the director of Titanic? You, you create an ungrounded graph in natural language. So here, what you are interested in is in X is the name of Y and Y director Titanic. So you are interested in the name. Whereas in Freebase, this is directly represented as X director Titanic. So there are two edges between X and Titanic in natural language graph, whereas in Freebase, there is just one edge. Yes? Thank you for that, actually, too, because in your grounded graph, that would be a mid, and you actually have an A attached to the name. Uh, so I didn't catch that. So actually, Freebase, that X in your grounded graph will be an ID, a mid. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And so actually. Oh, OK. <laughs> Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, this just to give an example, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Forget that uh, Freebase has MIDs, it has uh, this kind of uh, names, yeah. Uh, so what, what should we do with this extra edge? So one possibility is paraphrasing. So take this sentence, what is the name of the director of Titanic? And then paraphrase it as who, is, who directed Titanic? And then create graphs for that and do graph matching. Um, so we also did that. It doesn't work as good as uh, what I'm presenting here. Uh, the other possibility is actually transducing the graph. Take this edge and then contract it to make it look like Freebase graph. So there were two edges between X and Titanic earlier, but then I contracted that edge. So X and Y combined to form one single node Y and now there is just one edge between uh, the node you are interested in and in Titanic. And this looks like a freebase graph. Okay. So they're exactly the same framework like earlier. You have a weight vector which ranks all the features and then perceptron update. But you want a goal graph to update weights, right? Mm. So in the previous scenario, we know how to get a surrogate goal graph, whereas here, we have just question and answers. We do not have the goal graphs. So for this, again, we, we need to create a surrogate goal graph. So we take, we execute, we convert the natural language graph to all possible freebase graphs, compute their denotation, and then pick the one that has the closest denotation match to the annotated answer. So that's like, this is the question you ask, like what happens when there are multiple or multiple surrogate graphs? So we, we rank them using our pre uh, current model and then pick the one that's highest. Okay. Okay. So this is like uh, the common setup. So I'm using all of Freebase now, and uh, I have web versions that are mainly in English, but then we translated them into German and then Spanish. And for baselines, we used. Uh, different things. So one is uh, which doesn't use any form of syntax, which is a bag of words model. So that, that is, uh, I call it as simple graph. And the other one is using CCG logical forms. Right now we were using dependencies. Uh, and the other question you could ask is why do all this thing? Why don't you directly take a dependency tree and directly match the dependency tree to a free base? You don't have to convert dependency tree to logical form and then do the matching. So we also directly transduce a dependency tree to uh, the target graph. And for English, so this is to compare with all the existing approaches. So the first one, which is Yao, which is a bag of words model, which does 44.3. So out of 100 questions, it's like answering 44 questions. Uh, the other one, if you use uh, word embeddings on top of bag of words model, you get bust 15. You get like five points improvement when you use word embeddings. 
if you do uh, like fancy pruning, chart-based parsing, you get like a bit more. Uh, whereas our implementation of bag of words, we were getting 48.5. So we took uh, existing model of Yahoo and then made it even better and we pushed it to 48.5. And we do not use any word embeddings. So if you use word embeddings, we could go even higher. And if you use CCG, we were able to get 48.6. So here it says that it's not very useful, like the logical forms. Let's see wha what's the reason later. And if you directly map a dependency tree to Freebase, our performance actually drops. This is because the dependency trees, we are using Stanford dependencies here. Uh, the dependency trees look completely different uh, uh, to the graphs that are on Freebase, at least the Stanford dependencies. So the search space is very high, and you end up transducing a lot of edges. Whereas if you use uh, our logical forms, we were able to get up to 50.3. So this is using dependency to lambda calculus expressions using Stanford dependencies. And the state of the art method is using neural networks, as you guessed, <laughs> uh, which is uh, uh, Scotty from Microsoft here. Mm, that was doing 52.5. Uh, and uh, this. SU16, which is 53.3, is our latest paper, uh, which I will just briefly talk about. Yeah. I have a curiosity here. Um, uh, uh, first of all, how many questions are in here? Like 10, 100, 1,000? Oh, 2,000? 2,000, yeah. Uh -huh. Give us a sense of what are the differences as opposed to like 40% is 40% Yeah. Or, I don't remember that much. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Like, where do you think assemble? So these last two methods, they they're based since they are based on continuous representations, uh, the other ones are based on symbolic representations. So the training data is so small, freebase is so big. So in one case you have director. Uh, in, in the, if you see the word director in, uh, in the training data and directed in the testing time, you wouldn't answer that question using any of these methods, the symbolic methods. You might answer, but it's not that great. But the other one, it actually captures the similarities between uh, what you saw and what in the test time as well. Who, who is the director of Titanic? Yeah. So that's your question. And in the testing time, you have who directed Titanic? Even though like director and directed has some similarity here. I got it. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Uh, uh, and this using uh, on German data, where we use universal dependencies. So the bag of words model, so I do not have anybody's results because this is new data. Uh, so the bag of words model is doing 43.5. Dependency trees are doing better because universal dependencies address a lot of problems that were in Stanford dependencies. So it, you could see the improvement. And using dependency, like, we get like 0.8 or something improvement. It's not. Can you answer one question for German? Yeah. Like, I can't. Oh, not me. Like, uh, so Google helped me a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. People did it, not a uh, and uh, Spanish, so we also have Spanish, and it's still the same. We could see like a few points improvement. One question you could ask is why is CCG performing badly on English? Like, even CCG is so powerful. It should, my intuition was like CCG should perform better than the dependency trees. But the main problem I found was CCGs were not robust to grammatical errors. So, here, if you take what Nestle owns, the word order changed, and then CCG broke here. Whereas uh, differentiate parsers can still parse that question. Owns is a verb, and it's expecting a subject and an object. So you could find that thing. Whereas CCG, you should change the category of owns to S back NP, back NP, which is not seen in the training data at all. Mm. But like, 
defenses are also not perfect, like they could break on sometimes time someday. Because these are real Google search queries, people adapted to Google search engine so well that they actually don't ask uh, meaningful questions anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so. A problem with parsing or a problem with people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. I type bad grammar in the group because I know it doesn't care. <laughs> so I didn't use it yet. Oh, it's here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all get corrupted. We need to learn how to make decent grammar. But, but what Nestle owns? Would you ever type that? I, I think, you, like, what to do Washington in December, maybe you would type that. But I don't think you would ever type what Nestle owns. But a non native English speaker. So uh, to summarize this part, what we did is convert dependencies to logical forms, and then we treat it as a graph transaction problem. One good thing is we could also do multilingual semantic parsing because we have dependency tree banks in multiple languages. Okay. Uh, quickly, like I'll take two minutes, not more than that. Okay. Uh, have so here you have the scenario is you have both question answer pairs and you also have text. So earlier we just used either one of them and now we have both of them. And then here we also want to use very lightweight semantic representations. So for this we just use dependency trees. So the scenario is you have question answer pairs, web corpus, and the evaluation is still question answering on Freebase. And the resources we will use are, is just a dependency parser and uh, no other linguistic annotations. So to answer the question like who plays Jack in Titanic, if you take the dependency parse, so you, you could see all those things. And Stanford came up with the rules uh, like to break dependency trees to simple dependency trees. They call this natural logic. So who plays Jack in Titanic can be uh, broken into who plays Jack and who plays in Titanic. Okay, And now, this is like single relation question answering. So who plays Jack? So you could use your favorite relation extraction module and then answer that question. And you could answer who plays in Titanic relation extraction, and then take an intersection between these two questions as answer. So in the end, uh, you get the answer. Okay. But this question do not answer all kinds of questions. Like if you take what is the highest mountain in United States, the semantic parsing methods have a very beautiful lambda calculus expression for highest. Uh, whereas this, since we are using very lightweight methods, we break that question to what is mountain in United States. So we do not get the answer for highest yet. So we get all the mountains, and then see if we can find some text evidence. So we take all the mountains here and see if that mountain is the highest in the text, somewhere in the text. So Denali, so in Wikipedia you could see that Denali is the highest mountain peak in North America. So we, we answer what is mountain in US and then go to Wikipedia page of all those answers and try to see if there is some evidence for this question. I also give the answer. I, I, so. Sorry. So, you, so yeah, you get entity, page, question. Yes. And then you say, is this true, false? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but you don't care about, like, you have highest folded there, but the model is still getting answers to that. Oh, because, like, you have the input question, the complete question given, so it could right. actually use Got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for relation extraction, we used uh, neural network. Finally, uh, which so which is a convolutional network because we want to use dependency features. Um, 
and also the number of words in each sentence are not the same. So we used a CNN and to predict a free base relation. Okay, and then our numbers jumped to 53.3. So we we actually built completely upon Scotty's work. So we took Scotty's uh, work and then added all these things on top of his, and then we could push the number to a bit. You know. So like semantic parsing has multiple relation extractions, not just one single relation extraction, and uh, exploit text to model compositionality. I also saw that uh, Matt has been publishing a lot on this area. <laughs> uh, yeah, and my current work, uh, I'm creating a large data set for semantic parsing. One thing I find with semantic parsing data sets is they are not very compositional, so I'm creating that. But I'm very interested in the logical form. So Percy created a data set, but it doesn't have logical forms. It just has the answers. But I'm very much interested in the logical form. So I'm creating my own data set. Uh, and also, like, we're doing, like, end-to-end. -end. Given a dependency tree, can we directly predict the semantic representation for the target, lang or like target domain without having to go through other intermediate representations? And also, like some cheaper sources of supervision, like uh, paraphrasing. So you saw, like without question answers, with question answer pairs, both of them, and with three different methods. And you have all my code available online if you want to try. Thank you. <laughs>